Hi, my name is Royce. I'm the Minecraft Youth Leader at Victoria Theatre Arts Centre, and I'm here to give some roller coaster building tips. First of all, there are normal rails, which are able to turn corners, but they slow down minecarts over time. There are powered rails. When powered with redstone, they greatly speed up minecarts, but they'll bring carts to a stop if they're not powered. Detector rails, they don't speed up carts, but they will emit a redstone signal to all blocks under or around them when a minecart is on top of them. This will be really handy for interacting with other blocks. Lastly, there are activator rails. When they're powered like this, they will shake minecarts that are on top of them, and anything riding on the cart will be kicked out. When we ride across all of them, it looks like this. See how it kicked me out of the cart at the end? That's pretty cool. I'll show you the first example next. In this roller coaster, there are three branches that have powered rails on them. This branch is off, and that's why the minecart is stopped. The normal rail in the middle is called a T intersection. You can flip the direction of the track by, by applying a redstone signal like this. In this roller coaster, the T-intersection is powered by this detector rail, which allows the cart to go to all three branches by itself. You can use this trick to make roller coasters that take a detour and then reverse before going to the final destination, or just to make your ride more unpredictable and exciting. The next example is a cart recycling system. You might not know, but you can use dispensers to place minecarts on rails for you. But you can only put nine carts in a dispenser. If you don't want to run out, you can put the carts back into the dispensers automatically. In this roller coaster, the start and end of the ride are not connected. Instead, the minecarts hit this cactus and they break and fall into these hoppers. Hoppers are like funnels, and they carry the minecarts back to the dispenser to be sent out again. The lights show how the minecarts travel through the hoppers. You can use this to make it look like you have an infinite supply of minecarts, while also having the start and end of a ride in two different places. The next roller coaster is one showing how mobs can ride in minecarts. When empty minecarts roll past most mobs, the mobs will be picked up and will ride on the cart. They can't get out on their own, so the only way to get them out is to either carefully break the cart or to roll them over a powered activator rail. On this coaster, there is a powered activator rail at the top that drops the monsters at the top of the waterfall. As you can see, the minecart picks up the next mob from the waterfall and drops it at the top. This is the activator rail that ejects the animals from the cart. When they are ejected, they try to come out to the nearest safe block. They don't want to fall off the other side or be squished by these slabs, so they choose to come out into the water block at the top of the waterfall. You can use animals and carts to add pretend passengers for your ride. You can also use activator rails to eject players from carts too. The next and last example is using detector rails to add motion and sound to your ride. Because detector rails give a redstone signal when carts are on top of them, they can control redstone-sensitive blocks like redstone lamps, note blocks, and pistons. When I turn on the ride, you'll see how the cart makes the sticky piston turn on, which makes the cart change directions. In the back, the minecart activates the pistons and note blocks to add motion and sound to the ride. There are so many options for using redstone in your roller coasters. These are just a few examples. Okay. I'm going to walk you through making a roller coaster from scratch. With this roller coaster, I think I want it to start about here. I want it to travel this way, go up a big ramp around here, and then turn left. And then finally, I want it to go through a secret tunnel before heading back to the start. I want 
this to be this, the main station area, so I'll place down some wood to make a little foundation for it. And I'll make a train station like this. I put a stone button here, so you can start the roller coaster like this. I want this to be the end of the ride, the end of the ride. So I'll place down a detector rail here, and then I'll get an activator rail, which will kick off the players as they leave. Okay. This will be my ramp, so I'll start this way, and then the ramp will go upwards like this. I'll take this this track around this corner here, and then I'll put some powered rails on this ramp to help the carts go up. Without these powered rails, the cart would end up getting stuck and roll backwards. Place some normal tracks at the top, and then right here, I'm going to allow the carts to fall off the edge, and then I'll catch them, and then we can keep going. I'll test it out to see where I need to create the end of the, of the jump. Ooh, I forgot to power these rails. <laughs> Ooh. I need a little more power to get over this edge, so I'll place one powered rail right here. So we land about here. And then here, I'm going to create a secret tunnel. I think I want the door to be about here. So I'll clear out this opening here. And I want it to look like a case. I'll place this, this, I'll place stone there, sorry. Now I'm going to switch over to building with redstone. So I'll get rid of these blocks. I might need a lever, a redstone torch, um, I'll need repeaters, I actually need detector rails too. Um, what else? I need redstone dust, of course, and a sticky piston. I'll use these blocks for now. So, 
with my redstone door, they, there will be two blocks here, which will block off the entrance to the cave. And then there will be some pistons, which will carry the, which will move the, these blocks back and forth. There will be a normal rail here, which needs to get pushed by a piston, which I'll put. In order to power these pistons, I will need to create a path around the edge of it. I'll put it on this side. This is where the trigger to the redstone will be. It will be a detector rail, which I think should go about here, so I need to put a little bit more redstone dust that way. So when a minecart goes over this, it will turn on the redstone and then open the doors. The redstone will go this way, here, and then go up to power these different blocks. I think I'm going to use some slabs to build this, actually. Um, where can I find some slabs? Here we go. Oh, I think I need a power block up here, actually. I'll place a repeater here, which will allow the, the redstone to become full strength, because we don't want to run out of power. There we go. Now this full door opens. Okay. So to make this more efficient... Yeah, I'll place down a slab here. Okay, wait. Hmm. There we go. I'm going to place a lever. Actually. I'm going to place a lever here. Last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a, a redstone inverter, which basically makes it so if this side is on, this side will be off, and if this side is off, this side will be on. This is how you build them. You put a block of 
of any like any sort of solid block with the redstone torch and then you place a repeater on the other side when this repeater is powered it will send power and it will make this torch turn off so when this side is on that side is off oh oh interesting it looks like we need to have a slab here or else it will break the signal on this side like It'll break the signal on this side. There we go. So now that means that this door will automatically be closed, but when there's a cart on it, which I'll go grab a cart quick, when there's a cart on this switch, it'll open the door. As you can see, when this opens, this piston doesn't actually push the track over here. That's because when this first, like this doesn't get, this isn't actually powered right now. But when, if it is powered, it isn't, it still isn't going to work because it needs to be a little bit after that has already opened. So, to make this work, instead, I'll put an observer. And ob observers are basically like little, like, I don't know. They watch, they watch different blocks, and if the block is updated, they'll send a one-tick pulse. Which is really helpful for when you're trying to turn a solid signal into a quick burst. Um, there we go. So, the eyes are watching this signal here. And if it ever changes, it'll send a one tick pulse. If you look over here, you see how it sends one, one quick pulse instead of being solid. We need it to be a little bit delayed, so I'm going to put a repeater here with a little bit of a delay. And we'll see how that changes it. There we go. And that's it, I think we might be done. So, I'm going to create the path of the rails, and then we can test it out. So for this, I think I'm going to put some powered rails as well. Which will help the cart speed up as it reaches its goal. So a cart will land here. It will go down. Oh. Okay. Let's see. I think we might need to put some powered rails here as well. So when the cart lands, oh, okay. As you can see, this does take a little bit of trial and error, but once we get it right, it's going to look really cool. There we go. Oh, 
Okay, I'm going to make sure not to put a block here because that will break this connection. But we can now build around it to make it look like a mountain. Okay. Lastly, I think I'm going to put a little bit of cobblestone wherever it is to just make it look a little bit more broken down. There we go. Okay. Now we can test the ride. Oh, I'm going to put a little bit of cobblestone into this to make it blend in a little bit. Here we go. There we go. Wow, the activator rail kicked us out at the end. That's really cool. <laughs> go. Yeah. This is just like another little example of like how to make a roller coaster. Um, I hope you liked it. Bye-bye.